the speaker of the day. Uh, his name is Yatish Lele. He is an associate fellow at the Energy and Resource uh, Resources Institute, Delhi. Uh, he currently works in the field of conservation and natural resource management. Uh, in fact, that is uh, how I know him in one way. Uh, the other way in which I know him is as a friend. Both of us in Amud is also here. All of us know each other because we grew up rescuing animals and understanding them as we rescue them. And then eventually we got into our own uh, fields of interest. Uh, currently, me and Yatish have been closely associated with the Nagaland work. Uh, some of you have attended the Nagaland talk with Siddharth Edke. Yatish is the other project manager for that. And my visit to Nagaland was with Yatish, in fact. And whatever promotions we are doing for Nagaland is uh, mainly spearheaded by Siddharth and Yatish here. Uh, Yatish, uh, the session is all yours. Please start. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sushil, for this kind introduction. And good evening to all the participants who have uh, taken out time to attend this uh, webinar. So, yeah, just uh, let me share my screen. So, today uh, I am going to talk about the biosphere reserves of India, which are a very lesser known habitat. Uh, people do know that uh, some areas in India have been designated as biosphere reserves, but they are not aware about the real concepts why they were designated as such or the rationale behind it. So uh, I'm just going to... Uh, so is my screen visible in, yes. as a full screen? Yes. Okay, so uh, the topic for today is Biosphere Reserves of India with a special focus on uh, five biosphere reserves which are Nanda Devi, Kutch, Manas, Gulf of Mannar and Kanchanjunga. So uh, as we all know, we have recently heard very terms in which it is uh, very much realized that if we need to conserve a particular area, we need to use ecosystem based approach or a landscape based approach these words are coming into focus now we need to identify nature based solutions uh, or the some landscape some conservation methods we also call them as the socio economic production landscapes or seascapes so these are some of the key terms which uh, are in talk these days the basis of this uh, use of these words or the basis of using a landscape approach is that it is now realized that we cannot protect the area alone until we protect uh, the, uh, the people or the culture of that area with it. The people are the key protectors of that area and if we want to uh, protect a particular landscape, we need to uh, manage those people, we need to involve those people in the conservation actions. So this thought was already present uh, since the 1970s when the UNESCO came out with this flagship program, the Man and Biosphere program, where a few biosphere which are the uh, few important landscapes or seascapes unit could be designated as important biosphere reserves. So this thought was already present since the 1970s. The main reason behind it was to build a harmonious balance between human activities and the ecosystems present over there, study the and understand the dynamic interrelationships between the natural ecosystems and the socioeconomic processes, promote exchange, the transfer of knowledge. So today, uh, in the World Network of Biosphere Reserve, there are around 701 biosphere reserves known as the sites of excellence in around 124 countries. Now, uh, let's understand what are biosphere reserves. So the definition basically says that biosphere reserves are part of cultural landscapes extending over large areas of terrestrial or coastal marine ecosystems or a combination thereof and are representative examples of biogeographic zones or provinces. So definitely a biosphere reserve is just not a natural area but uh, 
it has to represent a complete ecosystem which also involves humans in it so in this uh, the man and biosphere program which has been initiated by uh, unesco the concept of man is at the central surrounded by the natural ecosystems and area uh, a biosphere reserve is usually designated into three parts usually the protected areas in india which we, uh, what we have we know that there are mostly two zones the core uh, the core area and the buffer area but um, in a biosphere reserves there are three zones which is the core area the buffer area and the transition area the core area is usually uh, consists of the entire natural area mostly a national park or a sanctuary where there is a 100% no human interference then we have the buffer area where we might have some human uh, interference and the transition zone where uh, which is a complete uh, human zone or we have the complete human settlements in that zone so this is how the biosphere reserve is zone yeah to start with the biosphere reserve program in india so in the 1979 this thought uh, percolated in india and a man and biosphere reserve committee was formed and in 1986 the biosphere uh, reserve program started the main objectives of this program or its implementation in india were to conserve the diversity and integrity of plants and animals safeguarding genetic diversity of species providing multi facilitated research and monitoring and providing education training and all of that with ensuring sustainable use of natural resources through appropriate technology for improvement of economic well being of the local communities so these were the objectives of uh, developed by the uh, management committee of india now total there are 18 notified biosphere reserves in india so these are the nilgiris in three states karnataka kerala and tamil nadu nanda devi in uttarakhand nokrek in meghalaya greater nicobar the lower part of andaman and nicobar islands gulf of mannar in tamil nadu manas in assam sundarbans in west bengal similipal in orissa debru sekwa again in assam they uh, dehang dibang in arunachal panchmadi in uh, madhya pradesh kanchanjunga in sikkim agastya malai again in tamil nadu achanakpar amarkanthak in madhya pradesh and chatisgarh kutch in gujarat cold desert in the himachal pradesh sheshachalam hills in andhra pradesh and panna in uh, madhya pradesh so these are the total 18 notified biosphere reserves in india and out of that there are 11 biosphere reserves which are also notified in the world network of biospheres so the biosphere reserves which i have highlighted uh, are the biosphere reserves which are part of the world network so uh, let's talk about and panna is also soon going to be part of the world network of biosphere reserves so a uh, total we are going to have 12 uh, biosphere reserves which would be in the world category so now let's talk about some of the biosphere reserves which i have clo closely studied yeah so the key aspects so uh, a few uh, few years back i have been given the responsibility to evaluate some of the biosphere reserves of india so these are the five biosphere reserves uh, which i have closely studied so i'm going to give you some insights about this biosphere uh, reserves how they work what technologies they use what good practices they have what issues they suffer what gaps there are present in the management and so on so uh, from a management point of view a biosphere reserve is usually looking uh, has been looked upon from these different aspects such as technical socio economic aspects the awareness generation aspect the research management interface intersectoral coordination the sustainability aspect and the regulatory regime so we are going to see 
how all these aspects work in a biosphere reserve. Uh, let's uh, see the Nanda Devi Biosphere Reserve first. As we all know, Nanda Devi is the second highest peak of in India. Established in the year 1988, the Nanda, De uh, the Nanda Devi Biosphere Reserve covers an area of around 6,407 square kilometers. The core area of the reserve uh, has two key important national parks, the Nanda Devi National Park and the Valley of Flowers National Park. The Bhotia community is the key community uh, present in this uh, reserve. In terms of uh, the technical aspects, there is a huge and wide variety of flora and fauna in the area. A lot of species of uh, flora, especially the plant diversity, is very wide and vivid in these areas, consisting from small herbs to giant trees and also this area is rich in terms of the flow uh, the fauna the mammal diversity the birds diversity the reptilian diversity and so on <clears throat> so in terms of management of this national park so how it is basically managed so as we know the nanda devi national park it is not open for tourists the unique concept uh, which is uh, and the reason, basically, the reason for that because it is bordering China. So, being a transboundary protected area, it is not recommended to allow tourism uh, in that area. So, this national park is completely closed. You can uh, have few treks in and around this national park, but not in the national park. And even so, the local forest department or uh, other departments are also not permitted to visit this national park. Only once in 10 years, there is a decadal monitoring expedition uh, which is being conducted, which uh, looks at the progress of the flora and fauna or they track the flora and fauna in that context to study the biodiversity and study the ecological changes in time. The last expedition was conducted in the year 2015 and yes there are important results of this uh, decadal monitoring because it really helps us to map the ecological changes such as now the seedlings of silver fir and birch are, are being observed at the periphery of the forest edges and so on. Then in terms of human wildlife conflict, uh, we can see human wildlife conflict in terms of snow leopard, Himalayan black bear, common leopard, etc. <clears throat> the human leopard conflict in a biosphere is uh, usually takes place in the transition zone where there is human population and which is dependent on the local natural resources for their day-to-day -day livelihood. So the issue, this issue of human wildlife conflict is managed by the departments by providing cons, uh, compensations or through some infrastructural aspects and so on. Then the department uh, conducts regular patrolling in the buffer and transition zone of this reserve. So for, a, for the biosphere reserve, you don't really have to monitor any of the core area because it is already being protected and no human is allowed in that. So the key patrolling and monitoring is conducted in the buffer or and the transition zone of uh, the biosphere reserves where the real human interaction is usually conducted. Then the department also studies the fauna through camera traps, then uh, the management of uh, forest uh, fires and weeds are uh, taken care of. After the Uttarakhand floods, there are a lot of soil conservation activities which are conducted. Then in, uh, in terms of safeguarding the genetic diversity of species, there are hundreds of medicinal plants which are present in that area. Plus, uh, in terms of domestic biodiversity, there are also various species, local species of uh, cows or local species of crops which are present. So these crops and these local gene varieties need to be safeguarded and forest department is ensuring 
that this local genes or for example the local badri species of cow which is famous in uttarakhand or the crops such as uh, ugal or fafar these are the local indigenous crops they really need to be safeguarded <clears throat> then in terms of research there is a lot of research being conducted in the nanda devi biosphere reserve so usually for a biosphere reserve there is an organization dedicated or uh, specifically to research on uh, on that biosphere reserve so in this context the gb panth himalayan institute is the recognized institute for conducting uh, research uh, for the nanda devi biosphere reserve but in terms of the interface between research and management it was found that the interface is very poor whatever research is happening is just present in books and it is not getting translated into action at the forest department level then there is a dedicated interpretation center to spread information about this biosphere reserve at joshimart and this interpretation center also acts as an important center for training of local communities or staff then also uh, there is an important center at rainy village uh, so rainy village or lata village we are all aware about this villages because of the famous chipko andolan started by gaura devi ji so the concept of conservation is very deeply rooted in the communities uh in this biosphere reserve and we can all see that once we visit that area then the department is trying to reduce the dependence of the communities or the one panchayats on the local fuel board by providing lpg connections or helping uh, them through collection of different minor forest produce we can which will generate some income plus the department is also providing them with horticulture crops or providing vocational trainings for poultry and apiculture and so on and so forth then a uh, habitat improvement is also a important activity which is being conducted under the purview of a biosphere reserve so in especially in the context of himalayan region providing pathways for easy movement of the communities is an important area most of the villages present or the one panchayat present in that area do not have roads to directly reach the main road or the local market uh, where they can sell their produce so the department is helping them build uh, pathways in this case to help them reach the local market in terms of uh, eco tourism uh, the valley of flowers national park is the most visited area due to its beautiful floral diversity so the community is largely uh, involved in this area we have uh, villagers in that area which have homestays then there are forest rest houses different uh, government rest houses such as pwd guest houses as well then private hotels and a uh, lot of lodges present in area such as joshimart govindgarh badrinath gangria and so on but uh, the point which i am trying to make here is that the community uh, especially the eco development communities uh, committees uh, built by the forest department are completely managing the tourism which is uh, happening here in the valley of flowers so when we talk of tourism uh, we uh mass tourism is usually which happens over here and mass tourism brings the issue of uh, garbage so a garbage here is uh, managed in a nice way where the edc usually charges uh, 5 rupees per person as a cleanliness charge and the edc uh, collects all the garbage which is seen throughout the season it is usually dumped at a common point then the garbage is further transported to dehradun for further processing so all these activities are totally conducted by the edc members then in terms of uh, awareness generation all the uh, communities over there are well aware about the conservation aspect as we know through the chipko movement plus the forest department along with the eco development committees 
is uh, doing a, a lot of activities such as few camps on environmental days, street plays, plantation drives, and so on. They have also developed few brochures for the tourists to help them uh, gain the awareness about uh, the, this uh, area as a biosphere reserve and not just as a national park. Then, as I said, the research management aspect is very poor of the area. The studies are not really getting converted into actions. Then, in terms of intersectoral coordination aspect, uh, usually for a biosphere reserve, there is a state level committee at the state level and a biosphere uh, level committee at the ground level. The members are usually at the, the biosphere level committee members are usually the panchayat members uh, locally and few members of the forest department. But at the state level, uh, the uh, members start from the minister to the key uh, department members. With this usually forms a committee. The reason for uh, forming this committee at state level is because uh, the transition zone, there are uh, several departments which uh, have their working in the transition zone of area. And while managing the, the transition zone, it is not just the responsibility of the forest department, but it is the responsibility of all the departments working in that zone, such as the agriculture department, animal husbandry department, agriculture department, soil and water conservation department, and so on. So this, this uh, committee are very important. So usually what happens is the biosphere uh, level committee usually plans the research activities at the end of the year for the next year. That plan is usually approved by the state level committee and which is further, uh, the plan is further forwarded to the central committee, the central biosphere uh, level committee for further funding. So this is how it works and the uh, finance or the funding, uh, the central funding flows directly from the ministry to the state level steering committee uh, from where it is further uh, distributed down to the local level committee. Then, uh, as I said, in terms of uh, regulatory regime, uh, as there are several departments, there are several laws also in place which looks at different aspects. The major law which we see here is the Wildlife Protection Act being implemented, but there are also other forestry-based policies such as the forest policy of Uttaranchal, the joint uh, forest management rules, and the tourism policy and so on. So these are some of the overlapping acts and policies which we can see in this area. Then uh, even the flow, even the funding is from the central level, there is very irregular flow of funds. As we can see from 2013 to 2018, the Biosphere Reserve have only received uh, the funds once in 2016-17 to manage all the activities in the biosphere reserve. So uh, availability of funds is a major issue. Rather, timely availability of funds is a major issue which the biosphere reserves are facing currently. So now, uh, so these are the general key heads and this is how a biosphere reserve functions. So moving on to the next biosphere reserve from mountains, let's uh, let us go to the deserts, the Kutch Biosphere Reserve. So uh, the Kutch Biosphere Reserve, it was designated in the year 2008. It is a pretty recent biosphere reserve. The total area is around 12,454 square kilometers. There are two major national parks here, the Great the Run of Kutch and the Little Run of Kutch protected areas. Then the Lesser Run of Kutch is also identified as an important bird area by BirdLife International. <clears throat> then the local pastoral nomadic communities are very famous from this area, the Maldharis and the Rabaris. The Pagadiyas are the small traditional fishermen present over here. The Agaria community is also a very traditional community known for the traditional uh, salt-based work. They are the salt workers. 
then historically this area is very famous as this area was part of the harappan civilization which is also known as the bronze age civilization the key uh, the key species which uh, this biosphere reserve protect is the subspecies of the wild ass uh, which we know yes uh, so the kutch biosphere reserve is literally a paradise for birds you can see huge numbers of migratory species of birds are observed here the in this uh, wetland habitat also there are very unique species uh, species of flora especially the shrubs uh, population which we can uh, the herb and shrub population which we can see here the species such as anogais species then gomifora species dipkadi species sida species and so on then the forest department regularly does the census for the wildlife uh, the wild ass population they are really conserved in this area the population had really declined from 3500 individuals to 720 individuals in just a matter of few years but now the population has very much revived in this area uh, this area is also famous for the haubara bustard which has been recorded as a important species of bustard in the uh, little run of kutch area well there is very little human wildlife conflict issue here in this area there are few cases where where in the wild asses have raided the local agriculture of the farmers but the farmers uh, really don't give that much uh, attention to this fact that it, it is really isn't that much significant uh, as their economic loss there are a few cases of leopard attack rather only one and few cases of wolves killing goats but <clears throat> not much issue of uh, human wildlife conflict in this area the forest department regularly conducts patrolling in this area as this area is very much uh, susceptible to uh, habitat degradation further leading to desertification habitat maintenance is the key activity which the forest department looks forward to so many uh, uh, many infrastructures or plugging systems have or water holes ha uh, have been developed by the forest department here uh, have been developed by the forest department here to retain the groundwater ca uh, capacity as well then there is another important issue of a invasive species named prosopis uh, juliflora which we can commonly see everywhere in this area and this species has literally taken over kutch in every sense this uh, species usually is a fast growing species uh, people depend on firewood of uh, people depend on this species for firewood and this species really does not allow any other species to grow in that area so this is an a uh, serious threat to the area then uh, in terms of domestic uh, genetic diversity we have the indigenous cow and buffalo varieties which are very famous for their milk such as surti kankrej kanadi and the banni buffalo are these are the very unique uh, species present here and the important gene is of the wild ass which is being protected uh, in this biosphere itself the gir foundation which is the gujarat ecological education and research foundation is the key uh, institute which is responsible to conduct research for uh, the kutch biosphere reserve but there are very very few studies available for kutch biosphere reserve and uh the concept being literally new for the managers of kutch the research or the management is uh is developing slowly it's uh it's still in process then in terms of interpretation centers there is one beautiful interpretation center present at kalo dungar in which few important aspects such as the wild ass or the breeding story of a greater flamingo is well depicted here uh, through diff, uh, by making through models or showing how the flamingos nest in that area
Yeah, so this is a very important model which is implemented by the forest department here. Of course, due to lack of inner water or vegetation, feeding cattle is a very important point here. And the uh, biosphere reserve, the core of the biosphere reserve uh, being a resource rich area, the community members have to enter this area to feed their cattle. So the forest department. Uh, has done is the, uh, the the department grows its own fodder and sells that fodder at a very very minimal rate to the communities which automatically helps them the avoid uh, which avoids the entry of cattle in the biosphere reserves then the communities are also largely depend on a minor forest produce called as google gum the gum which comes from the <clears throat> bark of the species Comifora whitey. This really helps them uh, earn extra income but a lot of over harvesting was also observed lead, uh, which has resulted in the declining population of this species. So the forest department has now banned the extraction of this gum until the species really recovers. Then uh, some sustainable harvesting practices needs to be put in place to earn extra income, their reserve is uh, conserving this species. So uh, this biosphere reserve being relatively new, uh, in terms of socionomic aspect or in terms of awareness, people are still being getting aware about this concept of biosphere reserve, this concept of conservation. Of course, traditionally, they have been conserving the wild ass. But in terms of landscape, people are still uh, being getting aware about it. In terms of produce, the traditional kachi handicraft is very famous. And we can, uh, I think everyone who has uh, visited this area owns a local uh, kachi dress or shawl or some handicraft or the local hat and so on. Then uh, ecotourism, of course, the Kutch festival is very famous. Thousands of tourists visit this area. Then tourists also visit this area for its flora and fauna, especially the birds. Then Dhola Vira is also an important tourist destination, which highlights the Harappan civilization. And there is also a tree fossil park present over there which is really beautiful, which uh, shows beautiful uh, fossils of the ancient trees, especially their barks and the tree structure. It is very beautiful to see all these things. But uh, earlier, uh, there was a huge congregation of greater flamingos taking place at uh, the greater one of course. This area was also known as a flamingo cities but this is an important case study that how tourism has really destroyed that city so <clears throat> uh, the honorable prime minister modi ji when he visited that area the, he thought that this area really needs to be developed in terms of tourism so a road was built uh, in that area thousands of uh, tourists started coming to the area, infrastructure started developing around that area and uh, that flamingo city, uh, which was an important breeding and uh, nestling area for the greater flamingos completely got destroyed and the flamingos eventually migrated to the Pakistan side uh, of this Kutch. So this is uh, an important case study that how unsustainable tourism has really affected such a wonderful flamingo city. Uh, then a unique concepts can be seen. The Gujaratis are very fond of uh, wildlife here. You, uh, at an area, a temple where I visited, the local pujari over there uh, regularly feeds a, a couple of jackals over there. So this is an important awareness strategy scene. And usually the people over there are uh, well aware about the wildlife and uh, they were never involved in poaching activities <coughs> over there uh, compared to the other areas. 
then in terms of uh, research management interface as i shown there are very few studies available for kutch they uh, the areas is still being researched and more needs to be done then the state level committee the vice federal committee i have uh, i hope i have explained those concept well then also in terms of regulatory regime the wildlife protection act is the important act which is followed then the other act then moving on to the next biosphere reserve which is the manus biosphere reserve this is a very interesting biosphere reserve as you all know so this uh, manus is a national park it is a tiger reserve it is a elephant reserve it is a biosphere reserve and also it is a world heritage site plus it is also important bird area manus has a very unique history all the bodo movements and everything really uh, led to extinction of few mammals from this area but the department uh, working with the communities over there have really revived the local species present over there <clears throat> along with the bodo community the assamese community bengalis community the muslim community nepalis community are all present around this important area and agriculture being the main source cattle rearing is also important activity which is taken place over there then as i said uh, the area is very rich in its flora and fauna it has whole range of beautiful animals such as the golden langur assamese macaque bengal tiger clouded leopard the pinturong the dhol himalayan black bear hispid hare the one horned rhino the hawk deer bara singa pygmy hawk are all unique uh, uh, mammal species present over there also in terms of birds the bengal florican can be very easily seen in this area the forest department really have to be vigilant and clear and a lot of monitoring of wildlife is taken here uh, at uh, manas so the manas national park is the core or forms the core of this uh, biosphere reserve then golden langur is a very key species present in this area and the population had really dropped to 1500 individuals which was <coughs> further evolved to around 5600 individuals over the year then a lot of uh, issue is present for human wildlife conflicts coming from elephants leopards tigers wild boars other herbivores uh, as well so which completely damages the property and human life and lot of uh, crop depredation can also be seen the forest department is very vigilant about these activities and there are anti depredation squads present with the department which are uh, immediately affected upon any uh, such case plus the exgracia is also awarded in case of any activity then the regular patrolling is being conducted camera traps have been set everywhere around the periphery of the forest aranyak ngo is the lead institute which has been given the responsibility of studying this uh, important biosphere reserve so uh, aranyak along with uh, ngo panthera has been doing a lot of work in this area uh, providing uh, awareness to the community uh, communities building their capacities sensitizing them so uh, the uh, uh, department along with these ngos have developed service providers so these service providers are nothing but the community members who used to practice hunting earlier but have not turned into conservationists these are the green heroes of this area and uh, they these service providers also help the department in conducting surveys patrolling activities monitoring activities and so on <clears throat> in terms of genetic diversity the uh, important gene pool present here is of the indian rhinos and the pygmy hog uh, so this areas earlier did have the pygmy hogs which became extinct but through the revival program the pygmy hogs were uh, later reintroduced in this area and uh, which has now been uh, surviving well there is a staple population of pygmy hogs in this area similarly the eastern swamp deer or the bara singa as we know 
became extinct in this national park and they were they had to be translocated back from kaziranga uh, but now we do see a stable population of this deer as well other than aranyak or panthera there are several ngos and different institutions working in this area to ensure proper conservation of this area then uh, uh, in terms of social aspect a lot of work has to be done to keep the communities in their villages or not make them depend on the natural resources of the forest so a lot of community based work is going around a uh, community based work is being implemented around the villages in this area mostly the community works are is by providing training for pigeri or goatry or duckery or helping them in apiculture activities or building self help groups or uh, which would help them develop a few products such as pickles products or uh, garment products uh, which further can be uh, sold in the market aranya or atri or several other organizations really help in this community development then habitat improvement activities also needs to be taken care of so development of culverts or solar lights for the communities is an important activity taken place here the usual tiger tourism uh, ha- takes place in manas national park then uh, almost all the communities are aware about this uh, national park but the concept of biosphere reserve is still new to the practitioners over here and a lot of awareness drives are conducted to help local communities gain or understand the importance of this forest and the species in that area then a unique concept uh, implemented here is the smart patrolling concept so in this smart patrolling what they have done is they have installed hidden ir cameras along with sim enabled cameras so these are special cameras which work on uh, the heat sensors so a lot of poachers uh, have been uh, tracked through this technology so this is an important technology which needs to be replicated throughout the tiger reserves or important habitats uh, of this country then moving on to the next uh, biosphere reserves let's come to the seas the gulf of mandar biosphere reserve in tamil nadu so this is the first marine uh, national park or biosphere reserve developed in the year 1989 the total area is around 10500 square kilometers <coughs> the key species protected here <coughs> are the dugongs so uh, the gulf of mannar national park which is the core of this biosphere reserve is distributed along 21 islands in four different districts such as ramnathpuram tutikorin tirunuveli and kanyakumari so there are various groups of islands identified in different districts and total there are 21 island beautiful islands having coral reefs <coughs> as it is a marine biosphere reserve huge variety and range of different flora and fauna and colors uh, coral and fish species are present over here then uh, from the transition zone around 2 lakh people are completely depend on this biosphere reserve for their day to day livelihood so fishing being the key livelihood of this coastal community a lot of uh, people are dependent on this uh, resource to gain their uh, daily livelihood so there are a lot of threats which can be seen although the local communities are not allowed to enter the national park or the core region of the area there are illegal entries which can be seen <clears throat> there are illegal coral which are seen to be traded then illegal con- uh, collection of sea cucumber illegal collection of sea horses and so on these activities do take place in uh, this region then illegal coral mining is also a key threat to this area <clears throat> but this area has seen a lot of growth in 
in case of strengthening of the local communities over here plus the forest department is also doing a lot of things for reviving the local coral species through its activities then uh, the prosop is also major issue over here all the 21 islands are severely infested by this prosop is and the local species of uh, like palmyra or salvadora are uh, getting locally extinct from this island then the department is also doing a lot of work for coral transplantation or regeneration through its various activities it is placing artificial coral reefs then sea grass recovery is an important program being taken place as the dugong completely depends on the sea grass for its food this habitat needs to be revived well then mangrove plantation a lot of studies have been taken place at gulf of mannar and and it has really the interface especially here is good where the research have been really translated into conservation actions or the management actions or actions in terms of revival of species they have a beautiful interpretation center or at kundukal uh in terms of social aspects people are well aware about the area they really understand the important of this resource as they all are fishermen and their uh, life completely depends on this they are uh, involved in a lot of activities like making mats uh, making ropes cloths uh, mushrooms cultivation etc then jaggery cultivation from palmyra and so on and so forth uh then uh, this is a very important and unique concept uh, which the gulf of mannar have imp management has implemented which is development of a gulf of mannar trust so initially the trust this trust was developed through a undp jeff project in the in the year 2002 the entire project was for 10 years and uh, it was further handed over to the government of tamil nadu in 2012 now the, the key reason for this project was to improve the social and uh, social and economic conditions of the local community and also this area faced a lot of threat from the local middlemen who used to give loans to the communities for uh, generating their livelihood activities uh, which we call it as micro credit so this pro project or uh, really helped uh, in wiping out the entire middleman system so initially a corpus of 8 crores was given to the trust and over the years this corpus has now grown to 12 crores and more than 70 crores is the revolving fund which are available <coughs> with the managers of this trust so this is a very important uh, activity or socio economic activity model which we can see here and this should be replicated to all the biosphere reserve so this was an uh, important concept which is implemented here then all the regular activities are being taken here in terms of tourism uh, no tourists are allowed at any of the island all 21 islands are totally conserved and no tourism takes place over here and uh, the forest department is thinking of opening up few islands for the tourists through uh, the boats <coughs> so this was the gulf of mannar which we can see here then moving on to our last biosphere reserve which is the <coughs> kanchenjunga biosphere reserve in sikkim the kanchenjunga peak is the highest peak in india it was uh, notified in 2000 but it was renotified in 2010 as well it is also a unesco world heritage site under the mixed category and it is uh, the total area is around 3000 square kilometers the core area forms the kanchenjunga national park which is a important site for the local communities not in uh, just in terms of biodiversity but also from the cultural aspect as well the key species here is the red panda along with uh, thousands of uh, unique himalayan floral and faunal species then uh in terms of threats and uh, pressure there is very less threat of poaching which is seen but now it is uh, well being managed by the department 
but there is a huge threat of illegal collection of uh, medicinal plants especially the yasa gambu species then recently with the increase in tourism the garbage uh, the issue of garbage is more and more increasing in this area which has also uh, like supported with the issue of ferret dogs which is now being uh, largely seen in this area in this uh, biosphere reserve then uh, the communities uh, help the forest department in all the monitoring and other activities the himal rakshak is an important organization here which helps the department in uh, assessing the issues of illegal poaching or uh, any other areas human wildlife conflict is mostly seen with the asiatic black bear over here and the forest department pays them compensation in case of any issue then camera trapping is largely being done here to study uh, the mammal species the red panda or especially the snow leopard which is the key species over here are studied through camera trapping exercise then uh, this area especially the uh, every i hope everyone is aware about the goshala trek which is an important trek uh, for the tourist over here thousands of tourists visit this trek route and it generates a lot of garbage so what forest department has done here is it has uh, the forest department while entering the uh, the national park or the trekking area it lists down all the uh, items all the plastic items which a tourist carries and if this tourist does not bring back all those plastic items a fine is imposed on those tourists so they the motto of this is to maintain a zero waste trail so the forest department is really implementing uh, this concept in full force and this really needs to be replicated in all our trekking areas plus a lot of community activities is being uh, implemented over here the north sikkim district uh, of this uh, biosphere reserve what important thing they have done is they have completely banned plastic bottles so everyone has to deposit their plastic bottles while entering the north sikkim area uh, the gb panth is also the lead institute uh, responsible for conducting research in this area then uh, a beautiful interpretation center can be seen here which promotes information about the biosphere reserve a lot of social activities are being carried out the important crop over here is the large cardamom which really uh, improve which has really improved the economic conditions of the community a lot of social activities are being taken place along with the habitat improvement activities the trail needs to be regularly developed eco tourism activities are mostly favored in this areas uh, then in terms of research management interface yes there is a lot of research being uh, done for the kanchenjunga but the interface uh, really needs to be improved in this case more uh, awareness needs to be generated for the tourists uh, and also for some of the community members who are conducting touring tourism on a commercial scale in this area but uh, compared to all the other four uh, biosphere reserve the kanchenjunga biosphere reserve is really a well managed biosphere reserve which you can see in terms of everything uh in terms of awareness management community involvement management of funds management of activity and so on so overall the key major issues today the biosphere reserves of india are facing is first the governance issue so uh, as i said the transition zone is not just belongs in the purview of forest department there are also several other departments which are Uh, involved in management of this plus there are uh, different departments have their own policies and acts which are superimposing to each other or contradictory to each other or in conflict to each other so this governance issue need to be really resolved and uh, now that we have a management system and the gram panchayat is or the gram sabha is the 
uh, local level governance body all these management rights especially for the bachelor reserve should be given to the gram sabha for better management then illegal correct, uh, collection of forest produce or medicinal plants so this really needs to be addressed there is a lot of illegal collection activities being happening but their monitoring uh, is really necessary then transboundary conservation issues for example the gulf of mannar shares boundary with sri lanka or the or uh, the manas shares boundary with bhutan so it is necessary that this landscape or a biosphere reserve needs to be conserved in both the areas and not just india it also uh, needs to be conserved in the other neighboring country as well then only this concept of a landscape conservation would be successful then maintaining the local culture of the inhabitants so need for more money or more employment it is getting very difficult to maintain this local culture of the local communities which really forms the essence of the area so a lot of uh, management uh, activities or hand holding needs to be done for local communities to maintain this traditional culture timely funding needs to be there although the central uh, although the funds are uh, released well in time from the central ministry to the state the issue is with the state ministries in most of the cases the funds do not percolate to the man uh, biosphere level committee on time and the funds are mostly diverted to other things as well and also lack of sufficient uh, sufficient staff especially for the gulf of uh, mannar biosphere reserve which is a whole huge seascape or the uh, himalayan biosphere reserves which are very difficult to monitor so these are the staff really needs to be uh, improved or grown over there so that more area Uh, can be monitored we cannot completely depend on the communities or uh, communities over there to help uh, with the monitoring and other activities so these are some of the major issues which all the biosphere reserves are uh, really facing uh, across our country so yeah this uh, this was all from my part i hope i have really helped everyone understand the real concept of biosphere reserves uh, what they are how they are managed what are the different aspects plus also an important thing is uh, like how we have the protected areas the national parks the sanctuaries and other the tiger reserves as well biosphere reserve are, uh, do not really have a legal status in our country they are not any legal protection model so that is why it uh, it does not really get a lot of uh, attention in terms of management aspect or funding aspect but these are really important ecological landscapes or seascapes which we have to protect in order to ensure sustainable development in our country thank you so much i would uh, really like to see if there are any questions i'm sorry i have taken a lot of time over here uh thank you atish it was a wonderful session uh, i hope everyone enjoyed it uh, the session is now open for uh, questions if you have any questions please feel free to type them in the chat box uh, yati in the meanwhile let me ask you a question uh it is related to the talk that happened uh, previously with uh, siddarth's session as well a lot of people later wrote to us about uh are there any possibilities of interning or volunteering on projects that terry uh, does or you do uh yeah sure uh, anyone can intern you just have to uh, write to us and if we have a ongoing project for which we require interns uh, we will sure, uh, surely take you on board for that there is no uh, a separate screening process for interns everyone is welcome perfect thank you uh, guys in case there is or there are any questions please type them in the chat box Wow, uh, there are no questions. That means uh, everyone has really understood what I am seeing over here. <laughs> uh, 
uh, okay in case there are no questions uh, i would wait for another minute and then uh, we would conclude the session please feel free to write sure. your questions I think there are no questions, uh, Ratish. Thank you very, very much for this lovely session. I also, okay, there is a question. <laughs> uh, Divanchu has a question for you. You mentioned about coral transplantation. Uh, is that useful tool for management? What is your comment on that? Well, actually, uh, I think this is in context of Gulf of Manna. So usually, a few years back, uh, coral bleaching happened in that area and a lot of uh, Key coral species were wiped out. So this uh, the coral transpa uh, transplantation really helped in getting back the lost corals. And now there is a good population of uh, coral or healthy coral reef uh, which we see over there. So yes, it is definitely a useful tool for conservation or reviving of the species. A wooden okay. Any other questions, guys? Okay, if there are any questions later, you can always uh, mail it to me. Yes, uh, you can. Uh, okay, so when I have a question, yes, when I, this session will be recorded and uploaded on a YouTube channel later. Our uh, channel name is Journeys Explore. So even for others who have joined the session midway somewhere and have missed what Yatish explained earlier, uh, please don't worry. You can always check out the. Uh, video later, which will be uploaded by tonight, latest tomorrow morning on our YouTube channel. Also for people who have missed our previous sessions, they also are available on our YouTube channel, which is Journeys Explore. Okay, I'm typing the name. Uh, when I have sent you the name. I'm also pasting the URL for our YouTube channel in the chat, chat box. In case there are any other questions related to biosphere reserves and the talk that Yatish had right now, now is the time to ask your questions. Okay, I think we are good to conclude, Yatish. Thank you very, very much for this lovely session. I also thank all the audience for joining us today. Uh, we would be doing the next session uh, on Wednesday and the later one on Sunday. And like I said, in case you've joined Midway and have missed the talk, please feel free to see the entire session on our YouTube channel. The link is in the chat window here and the channel name is journeys explore thank you everyone thank you thank you very much for this opportunity thank you thank you yeah.